If you recall, we introduced that there are three modes of heat transfer, and we have discussed one of them, that is conduction. In solids, for example here, heat is transferred from the hot CPU to the bottom of the heat sink and then spread to the entire heat sink. We learned that heat conduction occurs by vibrating molecules colliding with each other and passing heat from the hotter side to the cold side. The problem we want to look into in this lesson is what is happening for the air around such system? How does heat get transferred from the heat sink to the air? This leads to another mode of heat transfer, that is convection. Convection occurs in fluids such as liquids and gases. Compared to solids, fluids have comparatively loose molecular structure and they cannot resist any external force. Since it occurs in fluids, convection is an important phenomenon not only in heat transfer, but also in fluid dynamics. Unlike conduction, whose principle is quite straightforward, convection is a complex process. It's a combination of two modes of particle movement, advection and diffusion. Let's start with advection. Advection is the transport of particles by bulk motion. For example, when wind is blowing, individual molecules within air have rendered motion, but there is a bulk movement of the air. Similarly, in a running stream, despite the random movement of the molecules, there is a bulk motion of water flowing downstream. Next, let's have a look of diffusion. There are two aspects of diffusion, diffusion of mass and diffusion of heat. Diffusion of mass only occurs in fluids. It describes the phenomenon that the particles in fluids tend to move from a region of higher concentration to a region of lower concentration. So when we drop some ink into a glass of water, the ink will gradually spread out to the clear water. Or when we spray perfume in a room, the molecules of perfume in the air move out and quickly occupy the entire room. The other type of diffusion is related to heat. We call it diffusion of heat. It is driven by a temperature gradient from the hot side to the cold side. In fact, the principle of heat diffusion is the same as heat conduction. Heat is transferred by collision between neighboring molecules, whether in a solid or in a fluid. Let's do an experiment here. If we drop red ink into a glass of clear water in room temperature and then heat up the water, you'll find that the ink in the bottom will start to move up, accompanied by the top clear water falling down. Eventually, the color becomes more and more uniform for the entire glass of water. In this process, both diffusion of heat and diffusion of mass occur simultaneously. Coming back to the heat sink example, the heat sink itself is expected to have high temperature when the CPU is functioning. Convection occurs from the heat sink surface to the surrounding air. This actually explains why a heat sink is designed with such geometry. It is to maximize the surface area to remove as much heat by convection as possible. In addition, it's also common that the CPU system is equipped with a fan to remove additional heat. In this case, advection also occurs as the fan continually forced cool air over the hot surfaces of the heat sink. Two types of convection often identified in daily life. One is natural convection, and the other is forced convection. Natural convection, also called free convection, occurs due to gravity and density change in the fluid associated with temperature. For example, warm air rises because of its lighter density, and cool air sinks because of its higher density. The change in density is due to the fact that at higher temperature, the fluid molecules have more energy and thus they tend to move further apart. There is nothing except for gravity that is needed to drive natural convection. Forced convection, on the other hand, is driven by an external source such as a pump or a fan, so as to force the fluid flow. We all can recall how nice it feels to have a fan blowing on us on a hot summer day. 
or conversely, during a freezing winter day, how we may warm our cold hands by blowing our breath over them. It is worth noting that because the mechanisms of natural and forced convection are not mutually exclusive, we have a third category called mixed convection that describes situations where both natural and forced convection are present. In engineering, we also come across convection all the time in designing optimal thermal performance of systems. For example, for large factories generating electricity by burning, engineers need to consider natural convection from the chimneys. If there's a fan for a system, usually we're looking at a problem with mixed natural convection and forced convection. For example, inside an oven, air rises itself as the temperature rises. The fan adds forced convection inside the space to have rapid heat increase in the air. Of course, fans are also used to dissipate heat efficiently. For example, server farms dissipate enormous amount of heat, so fans in each server rack are necessary. But proper HVAC systems are needed to maintain required temperature for the entire room. Now you have a big picture of convection. Let's move on to the next lesson to learn how convection is considered in a heat transfer analysis.